Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Josh. I'm going to be checking out An Idiot Abroad. This is Season 2, Episode 7, Climb Mount Fuji. Guys, please continue to leave comments below because all our videos are based on your comments. And if you are subscribed, check out those comments and recommendations first. We also have a Patreon. So if you can't afford to donate to it, that's all good. Just continue to like, share, subscribe, and comment below. And that helps a ton. So let's check it out. Climbing Mount Everest, people dream of doing that. Not doing that. What about climbing Mount Fuji okay. in Japan? If, if it's made for tourists... I'm guessing it's not that... It wasn't made. No, it wasn't but I mean, made. a lot of people... If a, a lot of pe It's like Kilimanjaro. Right. A lot of people used to say that's big and what have you, but now everyone does it. As long as it's not like that. Mm. And I nearly died once on a, on a hill like that. Because I started running. Going downwards. I couldn't stop. I kept chucking myself on my arse and I kept bouncing back up. The <laughs> wall. It's not funny. I nearly went into chips, like, through a bottom of a slate wall. Into chips? Yeah, like, smashing through a slate wall, it would have just cut me up into, like, you know, that sort of chip, chip shape. What do you mean? Why would you have been made into chips? Because there was no cement in it. It's just, like, a man-made slate. We were up there. Oh. I was getting mean... slate with my dad. Right. So you were, you were thieving? No, it's natural. Right. You can't nick off nature, can you? So you were running down a hill with slate in your pockets and in your No, mind. just in your hand. Right. I had hold of it like that, going down the hill, started to pick up a bit of speed. Yeah. Before you know it, my dad's going like, don't drop it, I'm going, not uh, And the weight of Your it... Your dad said, don't drop it. Yeah, I'd rather you were made into chips <laughs> than to drop any of this precious natural plate. Yeah. And my dad's mate, Sid, had to jump and sort of grab me round the legs. Cut all my face and everything. That's <laughs> 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 Yeah. This is going to be a doddle to you. Yeah. Ricky's so bogus. to come and pet cats. Tay wants to go to one of those so bad, man. She wants to go to one so bad. So I have to find one that's close to us so I can take her one day. How much? <laughs> 15 quid. 15 pounds? Just drop a cat. Right, there you go. Time starts now, I guess. Alright, boy. What are you up to? Just in a little coffee. Some cats. The cats? Yeah, it's a cat cafe. If you want a coffee and a cat, you come in. All right. That's nice. Not really. 15 quid it is. For half an hour. Yeah, They're not good. even friendly. Good for you, isn't it? <laughs> Stroke a cat, it's good for you. Blood pressure is good for anxiety. You're always sort of stressed and moping around. That just chills you out. No, but this isn't helping. They're not even being friendly. They're not coming near me. Your cat's friendlier. And you know how much that cat does me head in. I'd love to see your cat in here, you know. It would get battered, the way you spoil it. <laughs> Honestly, it'd be like a posh kid going to a rough school. It'd be a rigid, because you don't do any exercise, so that brings you down, and that makes you ill. So, I've arranged some exercise for you. It'll make you feel good, OK? It's, um, sumo. <laughs> You're in the home of sumo wrestling, so I think you should do it. But I've done wrestling. I mean, there's, there's nothing greater or more. Oh, the sound was separated again. A champion sumo wrestler. These guys are huge. They're like superstars over there. <laughs> it's just all about the nappy thing, isn't it, with Ricky? Making me look a knob. You can't look good in a nappy. A baby doesn't look good in a nappy. It's not a good look. And it's not even a skill that I want to learn, really, sumo. What what training do they have to do? It's just pure... It's just eating, isn't it? That's the workout. It's just something for fat people to do, which is good, cos fat people haven't got many sports, <laughs> you know? I suppose it gets them off their arse. <laughs> I just don't want to be under it. Oh. <laughs> a bowler's like... A, a, a bowler's kind of a fat sport. Mostly seven. Have you seen the size of it? They're like two rhinos at each other. It's unbelievable the force they're cracking. Just that is it. That's what you have to do. You have to push them out of the ring. Are there any yeah. of them that you think you could fight? Yeah, I'm over there with the blue shirt and glasses on. 
<laughs> can we at least get out of the nappy thing? Can we at least just say we don't need to do that? Because it's more about the pushing and the shoving oh, and the fight yeah, yeah. than the fashion. What do you want to wear, Carl? Just me underpants. But they're not wearing their pants, are they? No, probably because they can't get any to fit them. Carl, <laughs> Carl yeah. How are you? Go. How are you? Yeah. Is it's a a a <laughs> say again. Mouse thread. The, the nappy. Right, right. Let's go. Just wear these. Hurry up. Yeah. Right. Is it okay if I keep these on? No. Just give it a go. Let's just have a look. Try. Try. Please, can we just try? Yeah. Go on. No. It's fine. It is. You but, but but I'll be facing you. You shouldn't be looking at my ass. <laughs> this is fight. It's not arse competition. <laughs> Once that is on, I can suck it all in and you will not see. Oh, you know, shit. Can we just try? <laughs> <laughs> Drink their their water. Could be sweat or anything that. Bring water. It's fine if I get the shits anyway, innit? I've got this on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was checking for me prostate. No! Ricky's always saying I should have that done at my age. He's left a fucking ring up there. How was it? Um, honestly, I got absolutely battered. Thrown all over the place. Do you know that, you know that sort of classic nature thing of a, a killer whale throwing a seal through the air? It was like that. If it stick a nappy on that seal, that is what you've got. Uh got sweat in my eyes. Wasn't mine. That's a first. I was yeah, I was hoping that one you'd sort of be engulfed by about a pound of flesh and not be able to breathe. Yeah. You got that. Also that it would give you a giant wedgie. That's, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, basically, you've got your bucket list then. I haven't had mine yet, but you've got your wish. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I've arranged a cosy hotel for you. So, um, go and have a sleep. All right? Speak to you later. Jesus okay. Christ. I bet it's one of those caps and motels, something like that, just to irritate him, I bet. Excuse me, is King Chi Choi far away from here? Excuse me, you don't know where King Chi Choi is, do you? 
No. Excuse me, do you know where King Chichoy is? King Chichoy? Uh, King Chai Cho. Uh, do you know the like, price of that? What? Price of King Chai Cho. Is, is it there? Yeah. Expensive. Don't worry, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep asking. My, I, I don't know Japanese. King Chichoy. King, King Chichoy. Yeah, I'm just happy to finally get to the hotel, to be honest. Number 318. Room 318. Yes, this one's the third floor, yes. Second floor. Third. Second. Third. third. Yes. Are you from? Am I from Rome? Are you from? I'm from London. Uh, London. London, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. London. A bit uh, weird, isn't it? Like a morgue. I this knew it. In your capsule room. <laughs> I knew it. Right. Oh. You can you can watch TV. Japanese TV. Yeah. But I can hear noise. Is that someone staying in a cubicle? There's someone playing an instrument. Can you hear that? <laughs> that noise. I'm very tired. I've had a long day. There's someone in a cubicle playing saxophone. Listen. <laughs> uh, you can watch. Watch TV. Television. Don't worry about it. It's all right. I'm, I'm so tired, I'll sleep. I'll sleep anywhere. It's OK. I'm going to go to sleep. Thank you very much. Hey. You have a good night. Good night. See you then. Sleep that much. Saxophone bloke was at it. Bloke was having crisps down there. Hello, mate. How was the hotel? Yeah, it was like being in a coffin with a cat flap on it. Yeah. So cheers for that. You won't get a sumo wrestler in it. It was like a lunchbox for one of them. Well, listen, you you probably could do with some loosening up, couldn't you? Um, so I think you'd be quite pleased with what I've sorted out for you. Um, I've managed to arrange for you to do some uh, exercise, Japanese style. Uh, apparently, people in Japan, often they'll sort of get to work and then sort of, you know, exercise in a group. So um, I just, I've arranged for you to, to get involved with that. It's like 2,000 builders here, working on a massive building. It's obviously something that they do every day before they start work. It's like a scene in Glee, isn't it? Or fame. You don't have put the two together in a way, all that, all that dancing stuff en masse in this industry. I don't know, I don't know if I'm having some building work doing, if I'd be happy. Cos I get stressed out with builders at home. I've caught them doing all sorts. They sat on their arse, having coffee, 
doing a crossword. They never turn up on time. When they do, I want them focused on the plumbing or whatever. If I come in, I go, is, is the plumbing sorting? They go, oh, Alan's outside doing star jumps. I'll be going, hang on a minute, why can't he do that before he got to work? If he wants to do exercise, why is he doing it in work time? <laughs> Get the work done. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be more to Japan than this. I mean, what have I done, really? I've shrugged a cat in a cafe, I've, I've wrestled a fat fella wearing a nappy, and I've done some exercise with some builders. I thought it was going to be all futuristic. Gadgets, robots, where are they? <laughs> Looks like it shit itself. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it has. I don't know how human it is. <laughs> Kills you down. <laughs> I was obsessed with Asimo when I first saw it, like, years ago on the internet and, like, a following this, like, they started building it in the 70s and stuff, and I thought it just was freaking amazing, like, where it, what it got to and everything. And just him just saying it looks like a shit or something, just... Because <laughs> it walks like that. I never thought of it that way. I just thought like this is a mar this is amazing technology. It looks like it shit itself. Oh my god! Yeah, that was great. I'm gonna give you a headache. Not get rid of one. Look how complicated it is just for a toilet. Yeah, you know, the, the skill of Bill Gates. He's done a shit. <laughs> It's a crisp picker upper. If you want some crisp, but you don't want to get crisps on your hands, you use a crisp picker upper. How do you turn it off? Of <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, all the things I need a robot to do, is to fix stuff. In the 80s, that's what they were for, weren't they? They were in car factories, putting cars together. It's not doing that. It's piss assing about. I'm going to dance on a stage. We've got enough dancers. <laughs> I think that's the problem. It's got so advanced, it's going, I don't want to do work anymore. <laughs> we can't do any of that. We can't do that stuff. <laughs> but it's a robot. Thank you very much. Listen, what I've, what I've been thinking about is I want to invent something. I want to leave something behind after I'm dead. So that's what I'm going to do. That's, well, that's my plan whilst I'm here. OK. I mean, this might be a long process and might not be very interesting for television. You sitting in a room thinking. Uh, what, what thoughts have you had? Thanks. Just something useful. I come up with ideas all the time. I'm always saying to you or Suzanne, listen, here's an idea. I'm coming up with stuff all the time. That's why I think this is my strength that hasn't been used yet. Yeah. I'm st where I'm stood at the moment, they've got a plasma in the garden. This is what it's like in, in Japan. It's really advanced. And I reckon I can come up with something better than that. So leave it with me. Leave it with me. All right, well, don't be pissing around, wasting too much time on that. Um, you're there to see Mount Fuji. So get yourself on the bullet train, all right? I'll talk to you later. See you later. Ta-da. I'm not going to come up with anything that's going to change the world, am I? I just want to come up with something that's useful. It's like these. I found these in the shop. Basically, mops that you stick on a baby's feet and they mop up. Cos, let's face it, for the first three years of a baby's life. It's all take, 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 and they don't do anything. Keep you awake at night, keep shitting themselves, <laughs> cause arguments between, you know, in relationships. They're a pain in the arse. <laughs> but if you can get the baby helping out around the house, yeah. it's one less stress, isn't it? So these little mops, stick them on the baby's feet. They like to walk, they run around all the time, don't they? They're not going anywhere with it. They're not doing favours. They can't go out on errands but they can mop the kitchen floor. All 
right, Carl. Uh, I know you're heading off to Mount Fuji, but before you get there, we thought you might enjoy stopping off in the countryside to explore some of Japan's ancient traditions. Um, we've actually tracked down a little restaurant where you can try the dish that started sushi. All right, it's a fish that's been fermented for years, and I know you're not sort of really into your fish um, as food, but it is a real privilege to to try it. So, um, so I'm sure you'll appreciate it. All right, mate, enjoy it. Bye. Do I sit down? Chair? Yeah. I mean, that's bad, isn't it? What's the difference? What's the difference of doing that? Sitting there? Sitting there? What, what is the point in that? Carl, traditional Japanese sushi. Mm. I've been eating a lot of fish whilst I've been here. I'm not a fan. Maybe you, you can enjoy. It's very expensive, very rich. I, I think rich taste. Rich. Mm. Full of, how do you say, full why, flavor. Why has it got a lid on it? Is it alive? No. <laughs> how often do you eat that? Actually, I have eaten once. Once it's, in your life? Yes. Right. Do you, would Maybe you like some side... first? No, no, I, no, I, no, I eat do... always. Yeah. But... I, always I eat, so... But I've learned in Japan uh -huh. all that etiquette okay. and not to be rude, polite. Yeah? So I would like you. No, no, no. Honestly, <laughs> no, no, come on, let's play by the... If, if we're in Japan... That, I'd say, you are guests in this town. That's right, so, and I'm welcoming I'm you. I'm a host, so guests should eat fast. Right. <laughs> Stinks, doesn't it? No. He does. No. <laughs> what do you mean? No. He does. No. He does. It's a good smell. That's not a bad smell. No. It's very expensive. It's a lovely box. Yeah. I'm not moaning about the delivery. The tray is lovely. Yeah. The nice little sick bowls yeah. it comes with. Yeah. Beautiful. But that mm -hmm. should be on there, mm -hmm. should be nailed shut yeah. and buried. Yeah. <laughs> I can't eat that, Jamie. I think it's off. It's like a delicacy. It's been fermented for three years. Oh. There's something in the middle of it. I, I can't eat it, Jamie. I don't know if it's rude or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they're getting away with it. It's not a meal. It's, it's, it's more like a challenge, that. Oh, <laughs> my, my taste buds oh. have just been mugged. <laughs> That's what had gone on there. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sausage, egg and chips. I'm happy with that. Sausage, beans, potato cake. That's something Suzanne normally knocks up for me when I've been away. Something to welcome me back. If I have fish, fish fingers, battered cod. I've had pollock recently. Is it pollock? Yeah. I've had that because I didn't have any cod in the chippy. Oh. <laughs> And a drink something that's making me nauseous now. <laughs> oh, just hearing somebody puke just makes me nauseous. Are you know, invention? How's that coming along? Did Ricky tell you? I'm just sort of trying to come up with something. I've just got a magazine in front of me now, and looking at some of the stuff they brought out here, I don't think I'm going to have a problem. They've got an air conditioning jacket, which I don't get, because if you're hot, just take it off. I don't understand why anyone would need that. <laughs> You've got... Yeah. What is that? There's just a woman with a silver thing on her head. They're selling that. So I'm pretty confident... Are you, are you confident that I see where you're going? Because they've come up with a lot of tat and, and you sort of, you're in tune with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mate, Fuji's really why you're there, mate. All this other stuff, of course, is a, a welcome distraction. And you've got to be in the right frame of mind, really, to go to somewhere as spiritual and calming and meditative as Mount Fuji. So, um... 
I've arranged for you to meet up with a, a, a Zen Buddhist monk. Hello. What are you doing? Hello, Carl. Nice to see you. Well, good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, well, when you study Zen, you have to dress in Zen monk clothing, so... I haven't got a problem with that. Yeah. I'm always putting clothes on. Yeah. Little outfits, little <laughs> uniforms. It's fine. It's all right, doesn't it? It's my colour, this. I thought it was going to be orange. Pockets as well. I think Buddhism is for me so far. It's like when you walk into a house, they say you know within 11 seconds. It's the same with Buddhism. You wander in, I went, yeah, I like the layout, it's lovely. Got a lovely garden here, nice outfit. That's all you can go off. So I would like to introduce um, the way of thinking of Zen Buddhism. So let's start from the Mopin. Mopping. Mopping, yeah. Cleaning is uh, the most important training in the temple. I, th I thought we'd be sort of relaxing, meditating. Ah, Just uh, turned no, up, you no. said, let's get the mopping done. When was this last cleaned? Um, this morning. Well, why are we doing it again? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I do at home? I have laminate and I haven't got a mop because I haven't got any room. Will that do? No, no, no. Why not? <laughs> First, you have to draw a straight line. <laughs> That's all right. No, you... Oh, come off it. It goes out a little bit there. <laughs> Bought some mops that you put on baby's hands. Mm -hmm. There's some baby Buddhists in here. It's whining. What, and yours don't? Fair enough. <laughs> That's OCD. That's not Buddhism. That's OCD. <laughs> it me. It's probably, he'll, he'll finish his raking and then he'll go in and just separate all his smarties because he only eats red ones or something. He's got a problem there. <laughs> Would you be allowed to add fun to this? Fun? Fun. Oh, what do you mean by that? Do you want to race? Uh-huh. Might as well. Go. It is very important to practice city meditation. OCD. Please do not move up at any occasion. All right, um, your phone's turned off, so I assume you're meditating with your little Buddhist chum. I bet you look like two little hard boiled eggs, don't you? Sitting there. <laughs> um, it's all about om. Um, Annoying That's in a good way, though. Meditation, funny. Like, he went and ruined it by whacking me with a stick on my back. Oink! Oink! So why did he hit you, Kai? Because I think I moved. <coughs> but I moved because he had a big ant on my foot. And the ants here are big ants, and they bite you just for the sake of it. <coughs> and he bit me foot. I've got a bite. So, of course, I'm going to flinch. <coughs> Right, that's enough. <laughs> He's smiling. He loves it. Please follow me. What are you doing? He said, You want a cup of tea? I thought, well, I've got to get to bed early. I'm up early. I've got to climb a mountain. 
I thought, I want Kate Tay to have a cup of tea. It'd be nice to have a cup of tea. I'm a big tea fan. It took ages. There's no way they could get a job in a cafe, because the queue would be horrendous. So this face is facing to me. This aspect is facing to me. Well, mm -hmm. thanks for letting me have my tea before you. It's all right. And then... And... I shift it over. In front of you. Yeah. And in a way, yeah. quite like the way they made a big deal out of something that's so simple. Because at home, everything's in a rush, isn't it? They've made a proper moment out of something that we just do without even thinking about it. Sometimes I drink my tea, I don't even realise I've drank it. It's just sort of gone. I have um, Twinings English breakfast. Uh -huh. Do you know Twinings? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? But even though I can't speak their language, we had a connection there. We both like a cup of tea. Yorkshire tea. Yorkshire tea, yeah. It's really like... There's Earl Grey. Yeah. Okay. Not keen on Earl Grey. You see, we have tea bags. Yeah. Okay. Have tea Lipton, bags. Lipton's. Lipton's is yeah. very good. Yeah. No, really, I haven't got any other tea stories. And that's what tea does, doesn't it? Brings people together. Steve here, how's it going, mate? Um, I think you're about to climb Mount Fuji, and I just wanted to give you a sense of just how mammoth an undertaking that is, because, you know, it's over 12,000 feet high, freezing temperatures, there will be a lack of oxygen up there, so I'm very impressed that you're doing it, mate. Um, just so you get a sense of just how amazing Mount Fuji is, I have arranged front row seats at one of the best views of the mountain. I think you're going to find it really awe-inspiring, mate. I can't even see Mount Fuji. I'm not looking. I'm not even looking. I can't. I don't want to look. Mount Fuji tomorrow morning. Um, wasn't really worrying about it that much, and then it just suddenly hit me. But it's big. It's a big hill. It's got a plate there with it on. I mean, it even looks high up on that. Look, there's clouds by the side of it, not over it, by the side of it. And now you're giving me all this clobber, oxygen cans in case I need that because it's high up. Wasp jelly. I've never heard of that. I don't know what that does. Altitude tablets. When I left home, that's what I brought, a bit of old nut. I thought a nice stroll, some chocolate. Enjoy the view. <laughs> I said about the marathon to you before, people treat that with respect, but in a way, I kind of think that's, that's a piece of piss, because if you do get tired and you've had enough, you're in London. Get on the number 38 bus and go home. With this, there's nothing. You're stuck up there. What are you going to do? Are we going to go on? Or are we going to go back? We're at the beginning now. The track's not that bad, is it? Pretty flat. That's, that's my only worry. I think it is good to have two people. Ben Fogel. He did it with his mate, didn't he, that cracknell bloke? Two people, look. We noticed. Two people. It's always best to do stuff in twos. Two Ronnies. Vic and Bob. Ale and Pace. Cannon and Ball. Chaz and Dave. 
Jiu-Jitsu and Mel. Morkum and Wise. Ant and Deck. Dick and Dom. Who was it with Les Dennis? It's a bit harder now, isn't it? Shit, it's not a hill, is it? It is a proper mountain. It's best not looking up. It's always best not knowing how far you've got to go or anything, really. Yeah. I've been overfaced. When Suzanne's mum does a Sunday dinner, it's like that on a plate. Piled, mash, Yorkshire pudding. It's like that, honestly. We don't talk for the first half an hour because we can't see each other. <laughs> Just sat behind mounds of food. And even though I'm hungry, I go, I can't eat all that. But that's that for me. I've been overfaced. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's ever perfect. How do you mean? Have you ever seen a sight better than that? But... Who put that there? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the beauty in a giant tractor. That's hilarious. A train a train or bulldozer or whatever it is. Shit. This is mental now. And they really doing it late at night up there. Struggling. Oh, who's that at this hour? That's probably Ricky. It's Ricky. It is Ricky. Yeah. Shit. Just to fuck with them. Hello? Oh, I missed it. Probably just checking up on me. Seeing if I've given up. Turn round, walk back. <sighs> I walk away from a lot of things in life when it does me head in. <clears throat> I hated it, I was rubbish at it. Didn't complete it. I haven't got married, have I? So again, something else I haven't really finished. There's some wallpaper in that needs doing. I haven't finished properly. I didn't even get any sort of badges for swimming when I was at school. Unless it's a packet of biscuits, I don't finish it, I think. That's, that's been the thing. That's why, I, that's why I want to do this mountain and get to the top. And that's why I want to do my invention. I don't know if this is good telly, to be honest, because it's just pitch black. You can't see anything. I can't even think. Stay the night up there? Jeez. That bloke with Les Dennis. It was Dustin G, wasn't it? That's who it was. Torval and Dean. That's another pair. Oh, he's been all night. I've done it, haven't I? Completed it. But I feel like shit. Even though that's amazing. I feel like shite. <laughs> Do you know how I wanted to come up with an invention? Whilst I was there. We came up with one. Do you know the thing you put on your neck when you're on long flights? I've used that. That isn't how the finished thing would look when I, when I make it. But just to give you an idea, I've sewn that in. 
and whenever you sit down, you've got a cushion. Say like this rock, it's freezing. If I lay back on that with just pants on, get a cold ass. That's how you get hemorrhoids. But with this, just lean back. And as well as no cold, great comfort. And I can enjoy that. It's good, isn't it? Have you got a name for it? Pilco pant. What? <laughs> Pilco pants. I mean, I know it's not going to change the world, but neither did the egg cup. Neither did Soda Stream. It's just another little invention. Yeah. <sighs> It's all over, isn't it? Japan's done. The series is done. I mean, it's been a bit mental, hasn't it? The whole thing. I never wanted to travel. Didn't go abroad till I was 21, 22. And now I've been all over the shop. And I, I, I don't know if it's changed me that much. Really. I mean, when I go home, I still like a biscuit and a cup of tea. A cup of tea and, you know, dunking a biscuit. I'm well happy. And that's the right way to be, isn't it? Because you can be into travelling, but the world's only so big, isn't it? So eventually you're going to run out of places to visit. Whereas biscuits, there's loads of them. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, Carl's such a simple person. I love it. Because I like simple things in life, too. Hello. So. I, uh, I came up with my invention. Right. What was that? It's a pair of pants, right. and you pump up the arse, yeah. and you can sit right. on anything. I came up with it whilst in Japan, because you have to keep sitting on the floor here. They don't have chairs. Can I just say something? Go on. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Uh, see, firstly, that's actually, um, I could be mixing it up, but I remember there being like a Kickstarter something like that where there's a stick that's a walking stick and then it turns into a, a seat for you to sit on. So no matter what, you always have a chair and you always have like a walking stick. And it's like, it's like, um, telescopic, so it's compactable too, like real easily compacted. So you always have somewhere to sit, so you can always sit comfortably. So his isn't as a complex, but that's the thing where people always want somewhere comfortable to sit and it's portable as well. So not like it's a bad invention. And I've heard, I forgot who said it, but they said, find a problem, whatever it is, and find a solution for that problem. You don't have to change the world. Just invent something that's a solution. That's it to any type of everyday um, problem. So, they said, too many people try to make an invention that changes the entire world. You got to think simpler than that. And, um, and this is Japan has so much stuff. I know they said they, everything is a commodity there. You can commoditize, I'm saying the wrong word wrong, but you can turn anything to a commodity. Um, that's why they have so many freaking um, inventions. So, yeah, man. He had an invention, he had an idea, and I don't know if he probably never went for it, but yeah. Whenever you have an idea, freaking go for it, man. You got to try it. I, I think you can even, um, I remember reading somewhere where you can you don't have to actually come up with the capital and stuff yourself. You can just um, get it like a patent or whatever. I could be explaining this all wrong. And then people are willing to just buy the invention off of you and then you get royalties from it. You just got to sell it to the right people and all the jazz. And now with crowdfunding, crowdfunding is starting to take a dip now. Not as many, many people invest in it, but there's still an opportunity for you to step out there and create something. So I get it. He said he wants to invent something before he dies. So even if you invent something and it doesn't go well, um, at least you have something that you know you, you created and you put out there, man. So... Definitely down for it. Carl's fantastic, man. I love how he, uh, like I said, you can love traveling and all that stuff, but it's essentially the same board out to me is like, it's the simple things in life. And if you enjoy simple things in life, you seem like you'd be a lot happier because you're not always chasing like a high, like a travel high or what have you. So I agree. I'm not big, but I'm not big on traveling. My brother is. He loves traveling. So can't knock people who, who like to travel. Well, I won't stretch this out longer than it is, guys. I'm super excited for the episode eight because everybody keeps talking about how fantastic it is. How fantastic it is! I'm really looking forward to checking that out. So, guys, that is all for this one. I want to say again, thank you to all the patrons. Thank you to everybody who likes, shares, and subscribes and comments on my stuff. That is super awesome, you guys. 
And that is it. Hopefully you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.